I just want to talk a little bit for a few minutes about weathering track. Uh, anything that sits outdoors sooner or later is going to weather and track is certainly no exception to that. Uh, you know we spend a lot of time weathering our buildings and weathering our rolling stock and our motive power so we should spend a few minutes at least uh, weathering our track as well. And there's a lot of ways uh, just as it's the case with so many things in our in our hobby there's a lot of ways to weather track. You know, there's those modelers who use a rattle can of paint, uh, spray paint and take it outdoors and just spray the, uh, the ties and the rail and then wipe off the rail heads and then bring it in and install the track and certainly there's people who use uh, airbrushes to weather their track. There's new pens on the market, weathering pens that are designed to, to weather track and then there's those of us who use uh, a good old paintbrush and this is a very inexpensive uh, flat, a uh, little over a quarter inch wide, st fairly stiff bristle uh, paintbrush. And use a, use a cheap one because it's going to tear this brush apart a little bit. And then use your favorite rust color, whatever that is. And I use uh, one that is a 50-50 mix of polyscale rust and polyscale rail brown. And I know both of those are discontinued, but I have a good supply. and. When I run out of those, there are plenty of craft paints in uh, the hobby shops and craft shops around that uh, simulate rust. And as long as it's water-based and you can thin it, you can use it like I'm using this. And the process is extremely easy. You just dip your brush. It's very thin. It's very watery. And then run your brush along the side of the rail and both sides of each rail. And I do about oh, eight inches at a time. And then I come back and I wipe off the rail heads. And I also take the time to add a little bit to the to the ties so that they don't look like black plastic. And again, this is a 50-50 mix of, of rust and rail brown. So it, it actually, when it dries, it gives a pretty pretty decent look to the ties as well as the rail. Uh, shows up very well in photography as well when you're, you're taking shots of your layout. The, um, again, I take a few minutes, do about eight inches, and then worry about cleaning off the rail heads. And you can see that I do this before I do any ballasting or before I bring my scenery uh, up to the rails, up to the track. Uh, this way if you get some on the road bed, it really doesn't matter. It's all going to get covered up with scenery and, and ballast. Now, speaking of ballast, I know that there's a lot of different approaches and you know the old debate always is do you ballast before you do your scenery up to the, up to the track or do you do your scenery first and then ballast? And uh, I come down on the side of doing it the way it's done in the real world, which means the sinews are ready there, and uh, then the ballast goes on, on top, falling on top of the scenery. So the last thing I do uh, is the ballasting. So there, that's, that's about eight inches of the, of the rail. And you can see I don't worry about getting it on top. So then I'm going to take a damp cloth. And I'm going to just run it on top of the rails, cleaning off the rail heads, because you want to have those shiny, so that they conduct good electricity between the, the rail and your locomotives. And in the real world, they are the only shiny thing on a track anyway, as long as the track is used once in a while. And that's all there is to it. When you're not taking the time to do a video, it just really works quite quickly.